We're still in module 15, which is doing division of radical expressions. Today we're going to learn about a very important word. The word we learned today is called rationalizing. And I don't want you to get confused or upset. It's a new word for something you already learned how to do in third grade. The word rationalizing in algebra means to make equivalent fractions. So let's talk a minute. What does the word equivalent mean? It means equal. What are equivalent fractions? Equivalent fractions are two fractions that do not look the same, but they have the same value or same meaning. For example, we all know the fraction 2 fourths means the same thing as 1 half. So even though those fractions don't look the same, they are equal in meaning. They are equivalent. Today we're going to learn about equivalent fractions with root symbols, square root symbols. And the word we're going to use in place of saying equivalent is rationalizing. So the best way to explain this is to go to the board and work some examples. Okay guys, so everybody look. I have a square root of one-third and I want you to simplify that expression. We've been discussing all semester. Simplify means do the operations you see. Well there's only two operations up there. The first operation you see is division. So the question is, can we divide 1 by 3 evenly? No, we cannot. Well, because that's a fraction, can we reduce it? No, 1 third is in lowest terms. So we can't do anything with the fraction. So the other operation I see is the square root symbol. Well, who, do, who owns that square root symbol? Who does it belong to? Well, it belongs to both the numerator and the denominator. So I'm going to write that. I'm really square rooting 1 and square rooting 3. Does that help me? Sure it does. 1 is a perfect square. What number times itself is 1? Well, that's 1. Is 3 a perfect square? No, it's not. So poor 3 has to stay inside. Now, here's where the problem comes. This answer you have is unacceptable. And the reason why it's unacceptable, because it goes back to arithmetic, third grade math. There is a fraction bar. This is the numerator. This is the denominator. We all have already learned and discussed this semester. The denominator of a fraction must be a positive whole number. So think back. I've been working you through modules. And if you leave this as an answer for me, I mark you wrong. Because this denominator is not a positive whole number. We've already discussed if we see a negative sign, it floats to the top. That's acceptable fraction. If the denominator is a positive whole number, then that makes sense. Because this bar means to divide, and I could take anything in life and divide it in three pieces. So the denominator of a fraction must be a whole number. A square root of 3 is not a whole number. If you take a calculator out and ask it to square root 3, it will spit out a decimal that goes on forever and ever. It's 1.7 blah, blah, blah. And we've called that an irrational number. So this cannot stay in the denominator. It is unacceptable because it is not a whole number. Now, to make it a whole number, all we have to do is make an equivalent fraction. That's all. We want a fraction that equals this. We want an equivalent fraction. In algebra, what we say is we use a big new word. Instead of saying make an equivalent fraction, we will say rationalize. Rationalize means get the root out of the denominator. Make the denominator a whole number. Well, the only way to make this whole number is to make an equivalent fraction. So now we've got to be back to third grade. How did you know in third grade one half equaled two fourths? Because you knew to change one half to two fourths, you multiplied the numerator by two and the denominator by two. 
So we learned in third grade to make equivalent fractions means to multiply by the same amount. That's what rationalize means, to rationalize. We, all we're going to do is multiply. So when you hear the word rationalize, all you're doing is multiplying. Now the hard part is you making a decision. What can you multiply to a square root of 3 that guarantees it's going to be a whole number? Well, let's think for a minute. If this number is inside the root symbol, you can only multiply it to something that is also inside a root symbol. So you know you've got to multiply by another root. What can you multiply to 3? What number can you multiply to 3 that guarantees you'll make a number that you could square root? Correct. You multiply it by itself. Because a square root of 3 times a square root of 3 would be a square root of 9. And what is the square root of 9? It's the number 3. Now, if you multiply the denominator by square root of 3, you have to multiply the numerator by the same thing. That's how you make equivalent fractions. So what is a 1 times the square root of 3? That's 1 square root of 3. That stays on the outside. That stays on the inside. Do we really need to write a coefficient of 1? Nope. Can we divide this? No, because that's in a root and that's a whole number, so they can't be divided. But this is acceptable because now look at the denominator. You have a whole number down there. Remember, roots are decimal numbers, so think about decimals like money. Square root of 3 is roughly $1.70, 1.70. If you had $1.70 and you divided them among three children, could you do that? Sure you could. So the important moral of the story is this. The final answer in radical or root world, if the final answer is a fraction, the root symbol has to be in the numerator. It can never stay in the denominator. And that's what we call rationalizing. All right, let's try another example in our class notes. Let's look at example four. You have four divided by six minus square root ten. Okay, let's take it step by step. I see three operations up there. I see a square root symbol. Can you square root ten? No, you cannot. There is no perfect square in ten. Remember, the perfect squares are one, four, nine, sixteen. So no perfect square divides into 10. I see subtract. Can we subtract these terms? No, they're not alike. That's a whole number. That's a root. The third operation I see is division. So can we divide the 4 by the 6? No. Even though 4 is a whole number and 6 is a whole number, the rule is you can only do division when you're connected by multiplication. That is not multiplication. There's a subtraction symbol there. So we cannot do anything we see. We can't break down the root. We can't subtract. We can't divide. So you would say, OK, I'll leave that expression. Well, you can't leave that expression because there's a fraction bar. And that means what's in the denominator must be a whole number. That is not a whole number. So what we have to do is we have to make another fraction that looks different but has the same value. We have to make an equivalent fraction. In algebra, what we called an equivalent fraction in elementary school is now called rationalizing. So they will say in your assignments to rationalize the fraction. That just means to multiply. So the question is, what can we multiply to a 6 minus a square root of 10 that would guarantee to get rid of the root symbol and make a whole number? Well, if you notice, there's not one term down here. There's two. This is a binomial. And the rule is to rationalize a binomial, you multiply by the conjugate. So there's all our vocabulary coming back to us. Bi means two. And when you have a binomial, every binomial has a conjugate. 
Conjugate means to change the middle symbol. So the conjugate is 6 minus a square root of 10 is 6 plus a square root of 10. If you're going to multiply the denominator by the conjugate, you have to multiply the numerator by the conjugate. The same thing. This step right here is the rationalizing step. Now, everybody look. We're back to multiplying in our last module. How do you multiply a monomial times a binomial? You distribute. So 4 times 6 is 24. 4 times a positive square root of 10. That's on the outside and that's on the outside. So 4 times a positive is positive 4. That stays on the inside. Okay, now we're going to multiply the binomials, which is the FOIL method. FOIL is a fancy way to distribute. But wait a minute, we learned a trick. When you multiply conjugates, you don't have to do first, outer, inner, last. All you have to do when you multiply conjugates is the first and last. That's why that trick is important. So first would be 6 times 6, which is 36. Last would be negative square root of 10 times positive square root of 10. The symbols are on the outside. What's a negative times a positive? A negative. Square root of 10 and square root of 10 are on the inside. So we'd put the square root symbol. 10 times 10 is 100. Now all this is is looking to see what you can do next. If you look, you have square roots. Can you break down a square root of 10? No. But can you break down a square root of 100? You sure can. This is 36 minus 10. And what is 36 minus 10? That's 26. You achieved your goal. You got the denominator to be a positive whole number. Now we got to work with the numerator. Can we add 24 to 4 square roots of 10? Nope, they're not like terms. That's a whole number, that's a root. So we're going to leave 24 plus 4 square roots of 10, and now it's over 26. But that's not the final answer. And the reason why is, what does this bar mean to do? That bar means to divide. We've already discussed this from our previous chapters. This divide by 26 belongs to both the 24 and the root. So we can break this up into two fractions. Twenty-four over twenty-six are even numbers. They can be divided by two, so that would give you twelve over thirteen. Four is on the outside, twenty-six is on the outside. They're both even numbers. We could divide them by two, so that would give us two over thirteen, and you would leave the square root of ten. Now, there is a way to skip this step. I call it Mickey Mouse ears. Have you ever all been to Walt Disney World and known the Mickey Mouse ears? If I look right here, I can get from here to here. And it's very easy. Circle all the whole numbers. See how it makes Mickey Mouse ears? If all three of these whole numbers can be divided by the same amount, then you reduce it. 24, 4, and 26 are all even. They could all be divided by 2. So 24 divided by 2 is 12. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 26 divided by 2 is 13. So I could leave this answer as two separate fractions, or I could write it as one big fraction. Okay, so just pay attention to how they want you to input your answer on your homework. We're done with division. Have a great day.